Hello, welcome to Let's Get Theorious. I'm Megan Reinking and this is Danger Room Debrief, where we dive into the source material of some of your favorite movies and TV shows. Today we're talking about the cheetah of DC Comics and five things that you need to know before seeing Wonder Woman 1984, whenever that ends up actually finally happening. <laughs> before we get started, be sure to hit like and subscribe so you can keep up with us here. Number one. There have been four different versions of the cheetah. The first was back in 1943 that was Priscilla Rich, the golden and silver age cheetah. She was a socialite with a personality disorder. The next was Deborah Domain. Now this was actually Priscilla Rich's niece and she is known as the bronze age cheetah. Now both of these cheetahs did not have any superhuman abilities whatsoever. They just wore a cheetah suit and were really good at fighting. The next two came after the Crisis on Infinite Earth series back in 1985, and this is broadly known as the beginning of the DC continuity. It was a 12-issue series that sort of rebooted everything, at least up until 2011 when the New 52 series happened that again was a big reboot when DC Comics canceled all of their comic lines and started over again with just 52 titles. Now the two post-Crisis cheetahs are Barbara Ann Minerva, and very briefly, Sebastian Belosteros, the only male version of the cheetah. Now these two versions have mystical origins, so they are the champion of a god. They transform into a human cheetah hybrid, they have super strength, agility, and very deadly claws and fangs. But for the purpose of this episode, we will mainly be focusing on Barbara Ann Minerva, since she is the subject of the upcoming Wonder Woman 1984 film portrayed by Kristen Wiig. Number two, there have been three different versions of Barbara Ann Minerva's story as well. Now, the first was the post-crisis version of Barbara Ann Minerva. She was a British archaeologist and the heir to a fortune. She discovered that there was a tribe in Africa that had a female guardian with the power of a cheetah. She went to investigate, a band of marauders killed the guardian, and the tribe's priest, Chuma, performs a ceremony with Barbara Ann Minerva on the promise of immortality. Now, this ceremony, she had to ingest human blood and the leaves or berries of the plant god Urs Cartaga. It essentially married her to the plant god Urs Cartaga. However, this all goes terribly wrong. Urs Cartaga is a jealous god and the guardian is meant to be a virgin. Now, Barbara is not. So it ends up becoming a little bit more of a curse rather than a blessing. So when she's in her human form, she is racked with terrible, debilitating pain. And when she turns into the cheetah, she has uncontrollable cannibalistic bloodlust. Now in this version of the story, when she is in her form as Dr. Minerva, she develops this obsession with Wonder Woman's lasso of truth. She wants to add it to her archeological collection. So she lures Diana in and this false promise that she has discovered the sister piece to the lasso, something called the Golden Girdle of Gaia. Now, obviously this is a lie. So when she gets a hold of the lasso of truth, she ends up confessing everything. Eventually this obsession with the lasso turns more into an obsession with defeating Wonder Woman in battle instead. Then there is the New 52 version of the Cheetah when everything was rebooted back in 2011. In this version, she was reimagined to be a corrupt image and foil to Wonder Woman. It was also revealed that in her past she'd used a few different aliases, which happened to be the names of the previous Cheetahs, Priscilla Rich and Deborah Domain, and that's kind of fun. In this version of her backstory, she's an archaeologist and also a friend and ally to Wonder Woman. She's a expert in dangerous relics, so she's consulted from time to time when it's needed. Now, through her work, she comes into possession of a cursed dagger belonging to a lost tribe of Amazons. She cuts herself and becomes possessed with the goddess of the hunt, transforming her into a human cheetah hybrid. Now she is extremely strong. She ends up taking on the entire Justice League. She's able to bite Superman and turn him into sort of an infected cheetah. Uh, she's able to keep up with the Flash, so she's extremely strong. In this version, the cheetah dates back to the Sand Tribe, who hunts alongside cheetahs, and every generation, a member of the tribe, is chosen to be the host of the Goddess of the Hunt. Until a hunter kills the host, that dagger that was used became possessed by the Goddess of the Hunt and cursed until it came into possession of Barbara Ann Minerva. 
And finally, there is the Rebirth version from the Rebirth series by Greg Rucka. This is the most recent version of the cheetah. In this version, she's very close friends with Wonder Woman. Now, through her archaeological travels, she came across a seemingly empty island, and she is there when Diana brings Steve Trevor back from Themyscira to the world of man. Dr. Minerva ends up being the one to translate Diana's language, to teach Diana how to speak English and several other languages, and they become very close. Through her friendship with Diana, she becomes inspired to seek out more divine gods. And when she learns about a plant god named Urs Cartaga, she goes off and searches for him. Diana unfortunately is unable to prevent the marriage ceremony between Barbara Ann Minerva and Urs Cartaga, which ends up cursing her to turn into the cheetah. Now later on, Diana does briefly succeed in breaking that curse, but eventually Dr. Minerva does end up being transformed back into the cheetah, she blames the gods and the Amazons and Diana, and she becomes an adversary that way. Uh, she also gets recruited into the Legion of Doom by Lex Luthor. Number three, her friendship with Wonder Woman. Now, in a couple of these versions, Dr. Minerva is very close friends with Wonder Woman prior to being turned into the cheetah. Now, it seems unlikely that we're going to see the rebirth version of this in Wonder Woman 1984, since we already know that Dr. Minerva was not the one to introduce uh, Diana to the world of man. Uh, so we're probably looking at uh, more of an adaptation of the New 52 version of the Cheetah storyline. But one thing that is always true in all of these stories, that while Cheetah sees Diana as her enemy, Diana has always viewed Dr. Minerva as a fallen friend in need of saving. Number four, Urs Cartaga. In most of these post-crisis versions of the story, the power of the cheetah is granted by marriage to the plant god Urs Cartaga. He is depicted as a jealous god surrounded by female servants and protected by the cheetah. But in the Rebirth series, we learn that he is not protected by the cheetah, but the cheetah is actually placed there to be a warden to keep the evil plant god imprisoned. He's fleshed out more here to be a very domineering figure, uh, sort of the embodiment of toxic masculinity seeking to control and dominate women. Which brings me to number five, the metaphor of the cheetah. While the character was originally created in 1943 by William Moulton Marston to be an allegory of, quote, jealousy and the embodiment of what he called less actively developed women who needed emotional reform by a love leader like Wonder Woman, end quote. Her meaning has evolved over time. The more recent adaptations feel more like a metaphor for the cycle of abusive relationships and what it means to be trapped and unable to escape a domineering male figure. Through Cheetah, the writers explore the psychology of abuse. Through her friendship with Diana, she comes to realize it is not her fault that Urs Cartaga punishes her. Barbara herself has done nothing wrong. Urs Cartaga hurts her because he can. It's really powerful symbolism that the toxic relationship has literally turned Barbara into someone she no longer recognizes as herself. Cheetah has appeared in many animated and video game adaptations over the years, but Wonder Woman 1984 will be the very first live action adaptation so far. Now, if you're wondering what to read to get into Cheetah's story, if you want to be caught up on the current version of the Cheetah in the DC Universe, I highly recommend picking up Wonder Woman Volume 1, The Lies by Greg Rucka. This is where that uh, rebirth storyline begins. But if you want sort of an overview of all of the different versions of Cheetah to kind of make your own conclusions on what might be used in Wonder Woman 1984, there is this book as well, which has the Wonder Woman 1984 artwork on it, and it's called Wonder Woman, Her Greatest Victories. Now this has highlights from the Wonder Woman comics over the years that are all relevant to the upcoming movie. So not just Cheetah, but also Steve Trevor's storylines as well. If you're looking for a detailed list of all of the comics that are relevant to Cheetah's storyline, they will all be listed down in the description below for this episode. All right, now you are all going to know way more than your friends will when we finally get to see Wonder Woman 1984. But if you want to be really nice, share this video with your friends so they're all into it too. And maybe you guys can all theorize on what might happen in the movie. So what are your theories? Let's get theorious about this. Head down to the comments below. Let us know what your theories are for this adaptation. What parts of the comics do you think you're going to see? What's going to change? Or are there other comics 
and storylines and characters that you would like more information on? Let us know down in the comments. We are always looking for those and excited to have these conversations with you guys. Now, while you're at it, be sure to like and subscribe to stay caught up with us here at Let's Get Furious, and we will see you next time.